It happened. was concerning the, how we should view the Father as one being. No, uh, it said the one God is the one person, and the being is the being of the Father, right? Yeah, so that's why I'm kind of conflicted. Would it be okay? okay I, I'm not, for, for one, I, I don't necessarily would it re reject that kind of a, um, view. Yes. Obviously, it's critical, but I also see um, as the one being being making a lot more sense as well. Yeah, I, I, I think they both. Yeah, one being. So, is the one being identical to any one of them? What is the one being? And that's why I think that yeah. the being itself is not actually as referring to anybody. You can just refer to the Father, the Son. So then the you're Holy referring Spirit. to God as an impersonal substance that is possessed by three. Where does the Bible define that the one God in that manner? Being when the person. Bible says one God, is the one God simply a being, a substance, or a person, according to the Bible, in the New Testament specifically? Um, a person. Okay, so that's why it's more appropriate to speak of the one God as the Father. The Father is the one God, so the one God is a person, and it's the nature, the essence of that person that the Son and the Spirit eternally possess and partake of. The early church fathers, the way they articulated the oneness of God, they referred it in respect to the one God being the Father because they were getting it from Scripture. So, and in the Bible, when the writers speak of one God, do they speak it, speak of the one God as the being or as the person of the Father? The father mm -hmm. so this is why the early church expressed their belief in the trinity in that way the one god is the father and jesus is true god from true god god from god light from light that's fair because huh? it kind of it kind of gives ammunition to oneness heretics in a way because like oh you see you see you see one god the father no they actually know, they take out of context no the other way around if the being of god is one and you're saying that being exists as father son spirit they can argue well if it's one being and that being exists in the father son holy spirit then that means the father is identical to the son and identical to the spirit that means they're the same person they'll argue the reverse reverse way Mm -hmm. Right? Is the being of the yeah. Father okay? G the Father is identical to the being of God, right? Yes. The Son is identical to the again? being of God, right? Say that, repeat that question. The Father is identical to the being of God, right? Yes. The Son is identical to the being of God, right? Yes. And so is the Holy Spirit. Yes. Well, if the Father is identical to God's being, and the Son is identical to God's being, and the Holy Spirit is identical to God's being, then that means the Father is a Son, and the Son is a Spirit. Because all three are identical to that being. It's the same self-being, self-same being, so they're not three, three persons. That's what a modalist will tell you. Mm -hmm. But in this way, no. This method of articulating Trinity, no, you don't get one person in three modes. It's three eternally distinct persons, inseparable persons, and eternal perfect communion and fellowship. Right? Yeah. Do you have a follow-up question? I hope I didn't put people to sleep with this, and I hope I wasn't speaking over anyone's head, let alone speaking over my head, because this is above my pay grade. But everyone...
one being. No, uh, it said the one God is the one person. 